Good evening, everyone. Sorry, will you please start with the roll call on the resumption from the meeting from July 10th? Mayor McEachern? Here. Assistant Mayor Kelly? Here. Councilor Tabor? Here. Councilor Denton? Here. Councilor Moreau? Here. Councilor Bagley? Here. Councilor Lombardi? Here. Councilor Blaylock? Here. Councilor Cook? Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you, Val. And I will. As we move on to page five, right at the top, I'd just like to thank, or take a second to uh, recognize uh, Ted Connors and his family. Uh, he's at the wake, and it's exactly a four and a half minute run from right here. Um, he meant so much to the community, uh, was just amazed getting to know him over the last four years, really, as a, as a public servant, um, and he will be missed. <clears throat> so. Community space easement for property located at 3548 Lafayette Road. I'd wait a motion to authorize the city manager to accept a community space easement for Monarch Village LLC. If I might, Your Honor, um, it's come to my attention that the planning board did not um, actually ask for the access to it, so I thought that I could make a motion that we go back to the property owner, request that they add to the easement the public access from the public street to the public space. Um, and if they add that, then it could come back and we could give authority then to approve it at that point. Does that work? So it's a different motion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just awaiting one type of motion. We could have many. <laughs> so if we put that in the form of a motion, yep. we can second to discuss. I will make a motion that we request that the property owner um, go back and uh, add public access rights to the public community space and bring it back to City Council at our next meeting. Second. Any further discussion? Legal, is there any concern with this route? No. Great. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next is a water service access easement for property located at 212 Woodbury Ave. I'd wait a motion to authorize the city manager to accept and record a water access easement deed in substantial similar form to the easement deed from My Maple Heights Realty LLC contained in the agenda packet. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next up, authorization to release a portion of the Prescott Park chain link fence to Seacoast Rep. Uh, there's a sample motion to move that the city manager be authorized to release a portion of Prescott Park fence with locks to Seacoast Rep, theater for use and or set installation on its property as an artistic element. So move. Is there a second? There's a second. I can add some color. Second. second. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Cook and then would it be a problem? I just uh, want to give an update. The city manager, these are your item actions. You're doing great, though. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Turn um, page five. I don't see it. If I could, the, um, as you know, um, the Seacoast rep has, has reached out to the city and has an interest um, that DPW director Peter Rice recently confirmed that they have an interest in um, some of our fence, which they could use in, in their production now and in a future installation on their property. Uh, we are also looking into um, the fact that they have some fence that we could use for swapping out. We're not sure if that's going to pan out, but we would very much like to work with them. And um, I'll pause there, and I think Councillor Cook wanted to, to say something. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, City Manager. Um, I really commend Seacoast Rep for reaching out to us and for making this offer to the city. I think it's really important that we preserve um, this fence uh, for our community, for those who've placed locks on it. Um, that's uh, what I have heard from my community members. However, um, I think it's really important for us to not only consider maybe allowing Seacoast Rep to borrow it on loan, but asking the Public Art Review Committee to take a look at this piece of fence and to consider whether or not this is a piece of public art that we could install somewhere within the city. And I wouldn't want to prejudge um, where that would be or whether or not they would decide it's, it's indeed a piece of public art. I think that they're the ones with the expertise to do that. So that would be a different motion. Mm -hmm. 
Any other discussion? Councilor Bagley? If that was a motion, I'll second it. Or well, it so we already have one on the floor, so we would need to. We could, re well, um, it could be two separate elementary actions. Inquiry would the motion to send a rev this request to send a review committee uh, uh, trump the one that's on the floor? It's, I would take it as a motion to amend the first motion. So, yeah, under those circumstances, yes. So, but it might be clearer if we put it in the form of a motion, of a motion to amend, to read. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess like in terms of prejudging, it seems that if we move the city manager to be authorized to release a portion, that kind of prejudges it. If we just move for the for a recommendation back from uh, the uh, art committee on the fence, it doesn't. But I don't know um, if that would pre see the motion that's on the floor maybe i could rescind the motion and change it that um we re sent make a motion to send it to the public art review committee with the idea of them determining whether or not it's a piece of public art and whether or not the city manager should release any rights to it okay to the seacoast rep right does that work no. i'd second that <laughs> Um, I'll probably want it a shorter motion. But that's <laughs> I'll get it eventually. I'll get it eventually. All right. It's, it's Any easy. further discussion? Councillor Bagley? Thank uh, you, Councilor. Aaron. I'll just speak to it quickly. Um, uh, I appreciate Councillor Cook's motion and Councillor Moreau's motion, or whoever's motion it is at this point. Um, but I heard a lot of feedback from the community that they don't want to see the locks go away. Um, certainly, there's probably multiple options we can consider. The generous office offer from Seacoast Draft reinforcing the fence. I think letting the experts on the public art committee look at it is a great path forward. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Not opposed. Great. Um, thank you. Item number six is a request from staff to establish an SAU 52 site investiga investigation committee for the purposes of exploring a potential location for a multi sport complex. And this would speak to the process by which the city issued a request for qualifications to explore the potential for a public-private partnership to develop an indoor multi-sport complex. As the public knows and as the council knows, we did receive two responses. They are in your packet. The city has some due diligence left to do. Uh, uh, although we did find that both firms are qualified, we plan to interview in writing and in person each of the firms to better understand their experience. Uh, their potential approaches, their opportunities. Uh, we'd like to know specifically if they've had ex uh, experience with public-private partnerships. Do they have experience working with communities? And if so, what kind? And so that will be work that the, f the city staff will undertake uh, immediately. Um, and once, as we try to understand where potential sites are within the school district, we think the best way to do that is to have a site investigation <laughs> committee made up of members of each of the four communities. Uh, in addition to Portsmouth, and uh, we would come back to the council with an understanding of what that group were, would 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 identify. So um, we are not uh, we are at that point once we understood where the sites might be and and the further qualifications of the firms, we would then seek to uh, potentially put out an RFQ. So that's where we are with the process. So we're looking for guidance from the council if there would be support for establishing a site investigation committee. And uh, if there are questions relative to the RFQ, we have uh, DPW Director Rice and Recreation Director Henley here. They were both intimately involved with this process to date. Council Blula. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm glad we're moving forward with this, but I do have some reservations of incorporating all the other towns um, on the site committee. Um, I know we want to look at any possibility location. I hope that Pease is one of these locations that is considered. Um, I just don't want to keep delaying this and keep, you know, I, I, I just, my only concern is that once we involve Rye, Greenland, Newington, um, we're getting more cooks in the kitchen and it's going to be delaying the process. But, um, I understand the need for space and I imagine if we did this just in Portsmouth, it would look exactly like what we did in the land use and the police station committees where there's, you know, those seven properties that we own. Um, so I don't want to repeat that process. 
Um, but I just wanted to state my concerns. Mr. Mayor, if I may add, when we put the RFQ out, I personally reached out to the city, uh, the town administrators and town managers in each community to let them know this was going out, to gauge their interest, and, and a couple of them, um, notably Greenland and Newington, did have some thoughts on potential sites within their communities. So um, another reason to include them and keep them involved in the process. Council Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I would support, um, or I'll make a motion to authorize the city manager to um, investigate a site committee for the purposes of exploring a potential location for a multi-sports complex. And if I get a second, I'll speak to it. Second. second. Um, I think, you know, Portsmouth doesn't have a lot of land. Uh, Peas could also be, you know, Newington. Um, I think it makes sense to look at, you know, the kids from all of these communities play on the same hockey team. I don't think it matters uh, for ice skating rink where the border is. Um, I do understand Councillor Blaylock's concerns that we don't want to slow this down, uh, but I think taking a couple months to evaluate, you know, the parcel of lands and all the surrounding communities makes a lot of sense. Councillor Blaylock. Um, and I just have another question. Um, have we fully understood what is possible at community campus yet? Or are we still evaluating that? That's a great question. Happy to provide some follow-up, and, and we can provide more for we'll follow-up at a subsequent meeting. We did perform an updated wetlands delineation survey, <coughs> and uh, it's updated compared to the last one, which was done basically 20 years ago when um, the Foundation for Seacoast Health purchased the site. Um, the boundaries are narrower um, than previously thought, and we would have to, we, what we will do is present to council, and I know the Recreation Board is interested in, well, how that map lays out. But at this point, given the, the, the requirements as set forth by the interested parties of at least five acres, that could be challenging. Um, thank you, and I, because I do, I mean, after we did the rec study, the biggest thing to come out of the rec study was the uh, centralized location of recreation facilities would be what is ideal. And I know a lot of people were hopeful that this would be able to happen at community campus, um, you know, along with the turf fields and everything else that's there. Um, but thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So um, I just I want to understand this process. Should we appoint a committee? Um, and that committee is cross city. There is, in the logical conclusion to this process, it could be that this is cited somewhere in Newington, and in that case, it would be the city, the town of Newington, entering into a, a great, an agreement rather than the city of Portsmouth. Is that accurate? It, it would be if, in fact, there was a public-private partnership to to pursue in that community. Um, to answer your question about the committee. Uh, staff would recommend that it include a member from each of the SAU communities if they so choose, someone from the athletic department, uh, someone from our facilities department and our recreation department. We thought about um, outside consulting um, folks from the contracting world who have an appreciation for that, as well as perhaps a resident uh, to serve and some combination of the deputy city manager and myself. Um, but the point about PDA is, is well taken. Perhaps we had a PDA representative once we speak with them. But we would not look to um, to slow down the process with this. We, we'd ramp that up right away, concurrent with reaching out to the firms with our follow-up questions. Councilor Cook. Um, and it is my understanding that there would be currently in the this the vision that is presented to us from these two firms, there is not a cost to the city for this process except mm -hmm. if we use city land. Is that accurate? Correct. Councilor Tabor. Uh, <clears throat> just to speak to Councilor Blaylock's concern, um, this we're told that this takes a minimum of five acres. So of the seven city parcels that we've looked at, for example, for the police station, many of those are smaller than five acres. And we get down to a very small number. And we know housing is a priority. We want to do something about housing. We know a police station is in our future. And so, um, if we had additional options, it might speed the process rather than slow it down because there's such a constraint on five acre plus parcels. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bullock. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honor. And yeah, I, um, no, I agree, Councilor Tabor. I, um, I just, my only concern is what I, I believe some of these firms have already talked to some of these towns, um, you know, so I don't want to repeat the process. 
Um, and I know most people were hopeful that this would happen at community campus. Um, so I, I would like to see a more further understanding of the, the property of community campus and why, either why this could fit or why it couldn't fit. Um, and just so people can understand that. Councilor Cook. Um, thank you, Your Honor. One final question. So if the committee takes a look at this, um, before we would go to an, uh, an RFP process, if this were going to be cited on City of Portsmouth property, that would come back to the council, is that Absolutely. Right? I would plan to keep the council updated as the process <coughs> moves along. All right, thank you. And some other updates just on the SAU 52 process for that would require uh, negotiation uh, as well. The whole, this started, um, I think, now three years ago? Wow. Ice hockey rink well before that, but approached by Ed Sports about three years ago uh, with the idea that we could solve the need for a hockey rink for the high school in Portsmouth. Um, that was how this originally started, and there's a lot of other needs outside when you come, when you talk to uh, people that would like to travel less for indoor sports, softball, et cetera. I think looking at it, you know, with more, uh, more communities certainly run the risk of, of Councilor Blaylock's concern that this puts too many kicks in the kitchen. We love our, we love cooking in Portsmouth <laughs> regardless. And so I, you know, I do kind of agree that if we could have other levers, you know, and we could, you know, have potentially move faster on that uh, with, you know, like a good example, the, the mall that was bought by Newington, it's, it's housing is strictly prohibited from from there. So that would be an advantage of that site to us and that we wouldn't be taking an opportunity to take away uh, from housing. And I do uh, echo uh, Councilor Bailock's uh, concerns or just requests on the site selection committee having the full understanding of what both P's but probably more importantly community campus would do from an equity standpoint. One of the best things we can do is reduce transportation um, and consolidate that. <clears throat> Uh, and so understanding that even if it's, you know, on the, the field or, you know, if we're talking about, you know, parcels next to, uh, uh, next to the, uh, uh, the water country parcel to understand just how we could accommodate something like that. Uh, but look forward to moving this one step further to start talking about where it could go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The last item under action items would be a request to establish a public hearing at the August 21st City Council meeting to look to <coughs> obligate some of the remaining ARPA funds for several projects, many of which came from recommendations from the COVID Recovery Task Force. And uh, in, in, in coupling with that, uh, we would also like to bring forward consideration of obligating ARPA funds to make improvements at the community campus property. For the, for the benefit of the nonprofit tenants and for city uses. And outlined in the memo as part of your packet would be the recommendations from the task force. And I'll briefly summarize them here and we could certainly get into them in greater detail at the public hearing. But uh, essentially $360,000 worth of recommendations from the task force, which would include supporting uh, and making more <coughs> robust the community resource network website uh, to allow for uh, transportation gift cards to support a pop-up library or a bookmobile, and the library is really excited about that, and to um, allocate 250000 to set aside to help implement items from the community health needs assessment that will be completed later this calendar year. So that totals 360000 some of which could come from uh, obligated, uh, restricted ARPA money, and some could come from the revenue loss category. And when we speak to improvements to the community campus property, that amount would be 1.5 million uh, plus 40,000 in IT infrastructure, which would be uh, used to support the nonprofit tenants to build them a proper infrastructure that would otherwise be prohibitively costly for each of them to do individually. So um, as an update, the city has remaining for ARPA funds 4.478334, uh, of which 3,700,000 falls in the revenue loss category and 755,000 falls in the restricted categories of public health and negative economic impacts or investment in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure. So happy to take questions now, and we would look forward to bringing this back for the public hearing on August 21st. Councilor Bagley. Yeah, Your Honor, I move to schedule a, 
establish a public hearing to obligate opera funds for several projects as just described by the city manager at the next council meeting <coughs> Second. second and I'll speak briefly to that um, the COVID recovery task force they met uh, for close to a year uh, sometimes several times a month and they came back with a, a pretty big list of, of requests uh, several of them have kind of floated to the top the the biggest challenge that we seem to unanimously find was transportation related issues uh, unfortunately um, it's a very heavy lift to, to solve the transportation problem and you know the the gas cards is a small way towards that but any of the the big you know coast level uh, things were really beyond the scope of the amount of monies that we had available the thought with the bookmobile is uh, a lot of our, our seniors and younger populations they didn't have a chance to interact socially with their neighbors there's been a lot of people that have moved in and out of the city uh, having that bookmobile go to each neighborhood and kind of create a neighborhood night out on a regular basis if you will uh, we hope would you know one doesn't have a transportation component and two it would get people a chance to socially interact again which was one of the big challenges that COVID presented and uh, the health department had a number of requests so this puts aside a good amount of money for those those important requests and uh, I just want to thank everybody on the COVID recovery task force for all the effort and hard work that they put into this Oh, and finally, the website. One of the other things that came up a lot was the grant website that we have is in PDF form. It's not searchable. It's it's very cumbersome to use, and the grant navigator um, monies would make that much easier for our local nonprofits to be able and go get federal and state grants. So that would have a real you know leveraging effect. If I could clarify the motion, I, I'm not sure if Councilor Bagley said the next meeting. Yeah, for if I would amend it to be so August 21st. 21st. Okay. And the sensitivity to that is making sure we have plenty of time to advertise, and we have several public hear second readings and public hearings on August 7th. So that would be why. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to request at the August 21st meeting that we also just make sure we truly understand how much money would be left that is unassigned or sure. what's left just so that we have an idea about where else we go from here after that happy to okay. all right there was a second I believe mm -hmm. all right any further discussion all in favor aye. aye any opposed thank you all right next up is presentations and written communications first up uh, wait a motion to accept and place on file email correspondence so moved second all in favor aye, aye. any opposed <coughs> next a letter from mark McNabb, who is in the audience today from McNabb properties regarding improvement plans for high street lad street and haven court as part of the one congress street project would we need a suspension of the rules to hear this presentation or yes if you want to have a presentation is there Honor, a, a move we suspend the rules to hear a presentation second all in favor aye, aye. any opposed the floor is yours Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Marie Bodie. I'm with McNabb Properties, and it was our understanding that this evening we would not have a presentation. However, we're prepared to reiterate what was in the package that was sent to you um, for the prior meeting that had to be rescheduled. So as we have articulated, we are proposing a gift to the community of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to make street improvements and betterments along Ladd Street, High Street, and to improve Haven Court. Um, I think you'll see that in the package, the, the whole concept was for you to see and to envision what could be from what is presently at the Thomas J. McIntyre building. Coming down the commercial alley, the openness, the airiness, the European feel, the comfortable, safe environment with lighting and tables and chairs. As you approach Market Street, we get to what is more of a do not enter plastered right in your face, um, uneven sidewalks, curbs, not navigable. As you continue on to the high Hanover garage at the high street entrance, you see that DPW presently is using a portion of that space for storage. 
As you go up Haven Court, we see a dumpster at the knoll of the hill next to the Newbury building. Beyond that, you'll see that there are barricades blocking off what can be the continuation onto Fleet Street. What you also see is a bunch of graffiti and darkness and um, what is not welcoming and otherwise known as downtown Portsmouth. Mark McNabb, as a citizen of Portsmouth, a developer, has reached out to the city. We've been in discussions with the city departments for um, well over a year, starting in January of 2022, uh, with the intent to gift these improvements to the city. Along with that is the sewer, water, electrical, lighting, all that would not typically be a part of the project that we have already approved by the city planning department and all of the HDC, et cetera, for one Congress, pardon me, one market square, which is at the corners of High, Ladd, and Haven Court. We've met with the city, as I said, on, or as the package indicates, on June 7th. We have a general understanding of all the betterments and improvements that are needed. We would like to add catenary lights. We would add, like to add everything that you see presently in Brick Market, flowers, people, engagement, life. With that, um, I believe there are, I think, excuse me, what was discussed at the city June 7th meeting was, is this to the benefit of our project at One Market Square? And it is not. As I said, we've been pre, or we're fully approved to do what we have presented. Um, these are, again, a gift to the city. We do have a couple of requests that we would like the city to engage in further looking at trash and recycling in the High Hanover Garage. We are hopeful of removing some of the parking spaces along High Street to replicate what we have produced on Chestnut Street. Again, lowering curbs, making it more pedestrian friendly. And um, I believe that is all that we would like to present this evening. Again, this was for, we understood you were going to review the package and we would have to come back at the next meeting for a full presentation. And if, I'm, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Sure, I think just for point of clarity for maybe the council and public and yourself, Maria, this was uh, intended to have a, a pre-read where a approval, uh, you know, so there's not going to be a vote or a Correct. motion uh, this evening. That's what um, we understood, yes. But the, we did expect to have the ability to have questions, if not a formal presentation. So if you hit the mark, flying colors on that. Um, but if there are questions, uh, Councilor Denton. I was actually considering making a motion. I'm not, gonna, not for today. Okay. Councilor Tabor. Um, yeah, a couple of questions. Um, you've proposed changes to the parking garage. Could you just clarify um, what's going to happen to the area that, as you come in High Street, uh, before the entrance to the garage, there's some parking there, there's some storage there. Um, am I correct that you're proposing that that be turned into retail use? Not for this presentation, no. Okay. We have had conversations and do believe that that enlightening and in, in, um, livening up of that area would be desirous for the community, but it's not part of our presentation. What we are looking forward to and hopeful that with the city manager's consent and continue negotiations moving forward that the trash and recycling would take part in the high Hanover garage for all of the local community members. Um, recently I was on site and Starbucks young gal was bring, bringing trash to around the back of where the gas light and Portsmouth Brewery put their trash. So that is part of so something that we are asking and seeking to work with the city on, but we are not at this time proposing to shut the high Hanover garage entrance. We do believe that there is a reason and a good reason to do that in the future. Um, we do have, as you all know, there are three points of entry into that parking garage and there are not very many other municipalities that have a garage that has three entries. Um, furthermore, on the high Hanover to get to that entrance into the garage, you have to go down three one-way streets. And what we've seen is a lot of people are just really circling the area, trying to secure a spot. Not all that many go into the high Hanover garage 
but as I think, um, Deputy, um, pardon me, um, Peter Rice would have commented at our June 7th meeting, as we are beginning to do our construction project for the High Hanover, our, our site, One Market Square, um, there will be a calming that will happen through the result of our construction. And at that point in time, in, in our discussions and conversations, it would obviously prove itself whether or not that High Hanover garage is in, access is needed and what it does for calming in the town square. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Um, and again, looking at the proposed community trash room, um, and, you, and you're right, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of dumpsters scattered around that whole area, um, and they're, they're not scenic. <laughs> um, but if you didn't have this, what would, what would your solution be for your, your trash? We have plans that have a trash room within our own building. So this is not to service our building, it's to service the community in the high Hanover Lad Haven Court area including the Wenbury building that we abut. Okay, great. And the last question, um, you've proposed a second story entrance into the garage. Um, we haven't proposed that, but what is in your package is I again, or we submitted, um, imagine if you could where that presently there's a drywall bucket that people use as a stepping stool to get through that window to get into the parking garage. We think that an actual door there would be much more visually interesting and obviously safer and um, again inviting people to use that entrance to as they're in the parking garage to leave and make it more pedestrian friendly and would there be a corresponding door in your building to go across the no even court okay you all know mr mcnab yes <clears throat> make you bail me thank out. you yeah you're <laughs> wonderful thank you um hi mark mcnab um live at 51 Baycliff Road in Portsmouth. Uh, the one thing I wanted to just add, Marie had mentioned um, to your question, what would happen if the trash facility was not incorporated somehow in the High Hanover garage? She answered it for our building, but what you would get is that dumpster that takes half the width of Haven Court up at the top knoll would remain. That's J.J. Newberry's building dumpster, that's not ours. And that's actually, I think, probably sitting on the city of Portsmouth's portion of High Hanover, close. Um, we have no place for that dumpster to go that services all the trash for J.J. Newberry building. Um, so that's what got us to think about that if we don't try to get this to be a, a city problem downtown, trash and recycling, uh, to help. Um, you know, we're, as we all know, we're 400 years old vast majority of everything downtown is built on the lot line just can't be solved privately you know any more so than sewer or water could be uh, or parking um, we've needed for a really long time a more comprehensive approach to trash and recycling downtown and not this off-limits kind of cram it on your own property and have a sea of totes everywhere so we're we're going forward with encouraging that uh, Part of our plan is to see that trash recycling room, and we'd pay the whole capital cost of that. The actual operating agreement, you know, we'd have to figure out a program with the city. I know the city did one on Ceres Street down by the waterfront. And for a variety of reasons, I'm not sure how successful that is, but that's not atypical when you first try your first one. Um, doesn't mean we don't do it, doesn't mean we don't have to, we, we need to do it. Um, so it is important to that area that um, if we don't have some trash um, like in that couple thousand square foot storage area in the High Hanover Garage, then those dumpsters will need to remain there in Haven Court. And our design right now, if you look at it, actually is a sitting area up there. You'd see the westerly sun. It would overlook down to Fleet Street. Um, and instead of that sitting area up at the top, it would have to be the dumpster that you see. Um, we can't take that right away from J.J. Newberry. We don't have that authority. We don't have that right. And we can't take away garbage that is a whole block. J.J. Uh, Newberry, for anyone who doesn't know, goes the entire block, Fleet Street, Congress Street, back there. Um, so it is important to us to see this trash recycling. As Marie indicated, we were not making our gift conditional upon the conversion of the lower part of the high Hanover garage to retail or closing that entrance. Um, we would like to see that happen. 
so I actually wouldn't distance it as much as maybe Marie said. We think that um, the dark spots that are created with the high Hanover garage around the entire building, uh, it just doesn't, um, retail needs to be able to go to retail, 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 and they need lights and they need to feel safe. And uh, it's not anything that we would build today, a high Hanover garage the way you see it. Um, so any opportunity that we can have to make it a little better than what it is, which is this big dark spot in the middle of the city. Um, those 15 parking spaces, plus or minus, I don't know exactly what. Pete, do you know if there's 15 there on the lower outside? Plus or minus 15. You know, that annexed one-story part is where we're talking about on retail. Uh, we did propose, and we still propose, um, we would pay at our cost um, to convert that to retail, Just to give us a lease agreement, um, to make that happen, or put it out to an RFP or whatever. But we would like to see that lower level. Um, it would encourage the council to think about that. Um, parking garages don't have three points of entry. You want to get cars off on the main arteries. You want to get you want to get cars into that high Hanover on. Hanover Street and, and secondarily Fleet, um, you don't want to bring them through the Market Square area. You could hire anybody you want to plan that. It's just not where we should. So we would like to see that part, but we have not linked it to this request of the High Street, Land Street, and Haven Court improvements. Mark, have you ever bought a, uh, a Powerball ticket? Um, you know, I never have. So. Sometimes when they get up to 600 million, I buy a Powerball ticket. The odds, 300 to one, two dollar Powerball ticket, almost kind of works out. Uh, the second biggest gambling that I do is when I drive in on or Market Street, I look for street parking. I take a right at Market Square, and then I cut back in after not getting any spaces, and I and I use that entrance to the parking garage. Uh -huh. I think there's a lot of people that do that loop, come back in, get the 15 minute spaces. And so I'm all for hearing like, if during construction this needs to, to close down, but I think this would be the idea that we would remove the 15 minute spaces and close down the high Hanover garage entrance would have a pretty significant pushback in the community, regardless of whether or not a traffic engineer would push back against it. Just the, the feeling of the community having the opportunity to go through downtown, miss out on street parking, and then, okay, I'm going to go into the garage. I think I'm not the only one that, that does that. I think there's a, a fair amount. So I, I like Peter's idea of, okay, if during construction we find that people are used to it, kind of like outside dining, we can revisit it, but yeah. very much not linked to any proposal that we might vote for or not and, vote for. And I didn't link it. I, I, but I don't want to miss the dialogue because the dialogue's important. I respectfully disagree with that behavior is exactly what we don't want, what you do. Sure, human behavior. That's, that's exactly yeah, that, what we, we got to solve for humans in this. <laughs> market, in this the market square area. Well, if you're solving for humans, you'd get rid of all these blind spots where there's cars on each side and the congestion. Um, but uh, you know, I, I respectfully disagree on that component. When you reference 15-minute spaces, are those the spaces outside in the first level of the garage? Are those 15-minute, or are you talking? What are I'm you? I'm talking about next to Starbucks, where everybody on the, on the high street. So, so I, I want to be clear on that. Um, I won't go forward with any of the improvements if those spaces remain. Okay. Well, okay. We so those are part of the thing, uh, because otherwise High Street and Land Street don't function the way that the widths, the curbs, the walking down High Street. I mean, there's only three or four spaces there. Sure. Again, there's a lot of folks that 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 really enjoy the use of that space to to jump in to to Starbucks, to jump in to Gus and Ruby, to do any and, number of things that that the the residents of Portsmouth very much enjoy. Uh, to be able to do in their downtown, knowing that those are likely open, and if they want to run in and grab something, it's a it's a it's a yeah. big positive so far. I get it. You have a choice. I I, I certainly understand what you're saying. Okay, so I want to be clear. You're uh, you're that's if we um, if I wouldn't be supporting this at the moment if there was if those parking spaces are gone. So is that that's a full stop for you? Yes, it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to touch a little bit on the parking spots, have you or your team discussed the removal of those with the neighbors <laughs> in that area? So I would say Starbucks, the um, engineering um, firms that have that that alley, the therapist office on the second. That so I'm I'm looking at um, essentially my neighborhood. So that that alley. And overall, I love this plan. I love the connection. Um, you know, 
my business, the other businesses in the alley have put a lot of work into, into beautifying that and sort of stretching that out as I, I love. My question is, has there been involvement with the, with the um, businesses that would be directly affected losing those, those spots in, the, in, in pedestrianizing that area? I can't speak to every specific one. I, I do know that the Condominium Association, which Starbucks is part of, the mm -hmm. Pierce Block Condominium Association, and the abutters on that street have seen our plan, heard our plan, and I, I believe have supported our plan. Whenever we dial down a micro level like that, you know, we, we didn't stop in Starbucks, but we are supported for what we're doing by the condominium association there um, liking the whole plan as it was presented which that was a component of always presenting because we wouldn't have the width right now both the sidewalks down there aren't wide enough even for a side uh, you know there's three feet wide and pinch point so it all just can't it doesn't coexist right now by code the width for accessibility for sidewalks so something has to get pinched you know and we're trying to just have too much programming there. So it wasn't like, hey, let's get rid of three parking spaces just because for the sake of it. It's really um, like similar to the music hall. It, you know, it, it, it needs that breathing room on that very narrow street to accomplish that um, effectively. So that was always part of the plan. That's been there for a year and a half as part of the plan. Um, what was not part of the plan is, but mentioned, is the closing of that high Hanover entrance and that parking there, um, the, the retail parking. My concern is when I, when I look at the overall loss of now, we're, we're looking at about 20 spots in that region. Um, if we, I uh, know it's not contingent on this plan, but if we look at the potential future development of that, um, that um, arcade area, uh, that has those, you know, 15 um, plus or minus spots, and then losing th these five. I'd be interested um, to have a little bit of more conversation, and I'm excited to see at, your, at the next meeting um, a more in-depth presentation. It sounds like you're prepared to do. We are. Um, and I would wonder too: is have has there been discussion with those businesses that that you would be looking to replace their trash to move to a a more um, cohesive neighborhood storage? Recently. No, because it's a showstopper if we can't get the city to, um, to be able to offer anything. We don't have anything ought to offer them. So, um, you know, if we had some type of a, a rough understanding or rough agreement, we would approach them. And, um, you know, I, I generally, when it's something cleaning up trash and recycling, you know, we'll find a path to get there. We'll mm -hmm. find a path to get to yes. Um, but I don't know. I do not right now have any agreement with J.J. Newberry, would they be amenable to moving their dumpster down to a closer location? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Bagley. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, first a question, then some comments. Um, am I understand correctly that when you come in, if the plan went forward just as it was presented tonight, you could still drive a car down High Street, take a right, go down Ladd Street, take a right, and come back into Market Square? So it'd be like correct. so it'd be like Siri Street or or um, Chestnut Street where you can drive on it, but there aren't that many cars that do because it's pedest generally a pedestrianized mall. Um, and then speaking more broadly, uh, you know, my wife goes to Starbucks just about every morning, mm -hmm. and she hates the idea of losing these parking spaces. However, um, in the community, there is a constant request for us to shut down Congress Street and make it a pedestrian mall. And we've had with the brick market and commercial alley we've seen what creating pedestrian spaces can do for our city if we were to remove those parking spaces and if we were to close off the garage we would prevent a lot of that circling where people are looking for parking spaces there'd be half as many potentials for pedestrian car conflicts in the multiple crosswalks in market square uh, for me having studied parking a lot since i got onto the council you know this is this is really a win-win for the city and it's a chance to create a parallel pedestrian mall to Congress Street if we go forward with these improvements. So I would say take the question and flip it on its head. We have challenging one ways downtown right now with uh, Penn Hollow, but you never hear anybody suggest, and functionally you couldn't do it because it's too narrow, but nobody would consider paving Commercial Alley 
so that we could get one additional one way and make car and vehicle egress easier in our downtown. So I, I don't think it's worth preserving these few parking spots or this uh, third access point to the garage um, when we have a chance to make it people first instead of car first. Councillor Cook, then Councillor Blaylock. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and thank you so much for coming and answering our questions today. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a question about the Haven Court piece of, of this um, puzzle, I would say. Um, the staircase in particular. Um, one of my real concerns in the city is that we have a lot of space that's not accessible. So how would you propose to make this accessible for those who are mobility challenged, especially to um, that pedestrian gathering space? Sure. Thank you for the question and um, I don't know if in your packet this evening you received the letter from the planning board that <coughs> supported this application moving forward to City Council this evening but um, Beth Moreau one of your City Council members <coughs> also had reached out regarding this topic to the access navigators and in this particular instance, there are other manners in which to get to that upper spot without utilizing the stairs. So I believe, um, Beth, if you wouldn't mind, I'm not sure if that's appropriate, but. Um, yeah, I actually had spoken to them because that was one of my concerns when the planning board actually walked this property and looked at this many months ago. And um, the way the law is written, as long as there's another optional accessible means to get from point A to point B, that you're allowed to do that. Um, so I, I want to follow up with that. So when we're talking point A to point B, are we talking about coming from the bottom of the staircase to the viewing platform or to Fleet Street? Because I know there are other ways to get to Fleet Street, but I was concerned about creating a, a pedestrian gathering space that is not accessible, that's on a public right of way. So it's accessible up Haven Court to the top of the staircase. You just go around. Okay. Okay. All right. And the second question I have is how do you propose to deal with the neighbors off Ladd Street who have parking currently for all their buildings um, while this proposal, if, if the proposal goes forward? Um, I know that this is going to be a particular concern for those it would buildings. It would be no different than any other city project if and when they had to repave that pro that street there would be temporary road closures there would be a cmmp filed so that we are maintaining communication with all of those folks and we had begun to retrieve the names of all of the abutters for the purposes of stakeholder meetings and informational sessions and we have done that as you all know or many of you know with our 60 Penn Hollow project we had to close Penn Hollow Street on a numerous occasion Daniel Street for upgrades to um, putting the electrical lines underneath removing the, the telephone poles and such so um, Mark is very familiar with those processes and works with the city DPW as needed so just a quick follow-up on the CMMP yeah um, I think the thing we learned about last time is that we should this should probably be in the CMP the connection management program should be a part of the presentation that we would approve going forward not something that we would approve and then build a CMP process so get the abutters understanding of this at the outset of the project I won't speak for Mark McNabb but I think I will say what he will say and that is that this package has been put before you is a request for us to give a gift based on the conditions that are in the package we are not prepared to execute a CMMP at this time for something that may not have your support and I would say it's you know to get the CMP would would help us get to the support of something to understand and agree on what would be the uh, the actions that would be taken in case there was uh, not um, you know not compliance with the CMP up front in in advance of any construction that would would begin like understanding that because last time we kind of built it on the way and I think we learned a lot of lessons from that and then we you know our goal is to take those lessons and, and front load them this time so I'll introduce John Shagnon who is with Haley Ward Arc, um, engineering and sure thank you 
I understand you have questions that people are asking that need to be answered, and I think the uh, access to those parking spaces on Lad Street is something that can be accomplished by, <clears throat> there's two entrances to those, so you could make it a one-way loop, uh, that section of Lad Street, while the construction goes on on High Street. So you, I think you would be able to address that and keep those open for those constituents. And yeah, I guess I'm specifically asking about the parking that is not on Lad Street, but is behind the buildings, that it's accessible only from Lad Street. Correct. Because there are two set, two parking lots there that are only There's accessible. There's the parking lot that's behind the Athenaeum building. Yes. And then there's parking, there are yes. parking spaces that are behind, like the gas light and all that. Yes. And so, it, like with any project, you keep that part of it open while there's construction on the other part of the street, and then you stage it so that you'll be able to maintain that access for people. Uh, as much as you can you know in any construction project sometimes there are short durations but you can tell your constituents that the team would work very closely to maintain that as much as possible and not inconvenience them okay. and I think it can be done okay. um, I just wanted to follow up with yeah, the, thank you um, I guess I just I I think one of the conditions I'd like to make sure that we saw was that those are all abutters as well, anybody who's impacted, not just those that are on the street that is impacted, but anybody who would have parking, um, private parking on their own lots that would also be impacted are technically impacted by the project and should be considered abutters of the project as well as renters of building spaces. I think that that's one of those key factors that sometimes we um, have a tendency to miss because we notice the owners of buildings, but oftentimes, especially downtown, um, you don't have owners occupying buildings, you have renters occupying buildings, so we have to be really careful about business spaces downtown. I think that that's one of my concerns. Um, I just had one more question about how would this dovetail, this project dovetail into the Market Square master planning process that the city envisions coming up just this fall um, because I'd want to make sure that we're looking at something that's um, contiguous with what the city plans, that we're not somehow upsetting uh, the city master planning process and what the city would envision. So um, the, I'd like to say some other things. But... Oh, no, please. <laughs> so I think what the ask is here is to get the process started. The team understands that there's going to be a lot of stakeholder meetings. <clears throat> but it's a unique situation where the developer wants to gift the improvements on city property and that's why we're here to say if you think it's something that's worth pursuing then we'll go through the process and we'll set up all the stakeholder meetings and do all that just like on Fleet Street where there was a process that involved the street community uh, when you did that redesign that process would be done here but the team can't undertake that without your permission to go forward and do that. That's part of why we're here. So and what you're asking for, though, just Mr. Shagnon, yep. is to is to be able to have us say yes, we will approve this, and then we'll go and we'll work through the 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 process of figuring it out. Um, and that process is, you know, could uncover things. Uh, in that and that's 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 difficult the other thing you know I really want to see a CMP before we would go forward with this because of everything that we learned when we tried to tag on a, a street improvement project with uh, uh, the uh, the arc um, it was really difficult to find out who was it the city doing the work was it was it McNabb Properties doing the work? Was the utility doing the work? And in that, people had a really hard time understanding who they could reach out to if there was, there was an issue. My concern is if we accept the gift and we have, you know, what's it, what you have completely and, and fully approved in terms of one Congress Street, if we add this other thing in here, it's going to be really hard for us to be able to say, oh, no, this is actually part of the city improvement project reach out to them over here. So I want an encompassing CMP plan before we would move forward with something like, yeah, because I want to make it clear because the last project was just, it, it, we learned a lot painfully from the amount of emails and, and call outs and miscommunications. And so I want to take that, front load it, figure that out, get folks on board, really excited about the gift, and then move forward with it at that time. But without a CMP in the, 
in the presentation of what we're agreeing to, it's tough to say, because then it's just going to come back to us and say, oh, well, you agreed to this before you saw the impacts of this. How could you have said that? That's a difficult position for us as representatives to, to be in. So um, I'll let Mark answer that as far as I think you would take that on. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's a process in regulatory enforcement where the CMMP is the end stop. The amount of time and energy and expense to get to a CMMP, um, nobody, city or private, pulls a CMMP to the beginning of the process. Um, there is a million dollars between now spent in a CMMP. It's not just pull the CMMP right now and go in and disclose all that. The project has to be completely designed, architecture, engineering. It has to be uh, a bond, a license agreement. Um, you have to have everything in line regulatory in the city of Portsmouth before you proceed to the next level. A CMMP requires all of that. Um, you know, hey, look, big projects, you, you learn a lot, and, a, and you learn a lot that there's always a component that is um, – goes along with big projects um, and it sometimes you change the system and sometimes you become educated on the system and um, a CMMP is the last stop you have your general contractor you have your your trades you have your steel erector you have your shipping you represent where trucks are going to come in, where you're going to lay down materials. It is a really comprehensive thing. Um, it's just not even really doable to bring the CMMP up front. Um, so CMMP has to be the end of the process on any project in the city of Portsmouth. And, you know, maybe a workaround on it, Mr. Mayor, is um, – Projects this big, like any of them, I don't care if it's the Africa Barrow Ground or the Music Hall or the, you know, the way to do it on this would be I would fully expect conditions. So if the council said, hey, we're going to prove this, we like what we see. We, you know, we, we like the curbs going away, the catenary lights overhead, the lighting. The, um, you approve a plan conditional upon an acceptable CMNP. So it gets right in the condition, but there is such an enormous expense to move this forward on this, to go forward. You know, I probably have seventy dollars to $100,000 already in just this that you see for the city, not mine privately. My private development, I have complete approvals, I can build it. So to go the next step, to actually design it all, you know, it's – all these people here, it's, you know, room full of people at $200 an hour for a really long time. So, uh, you know, I just want everybody to understand that process, that it, um, it can't go deeper in that process without a conditional approval. Um, it, it's the only way we can do it, respectfully. It's just really um, – so – we would propose that um, your condition would be that, um, of course, it's a mutual agreement on the improvements, because the improvements are going to go hundreds of thousands of dollars into design. You're going to be looking at, you know, paving materials and curbing and lights and, you know, transformer locations. And that process needs to live and be a living process. Uh, that technically would be taken care of between public works, between engineers, between all that. Um, to try to move all that forward at this point and do it in the dialogue of a city council, um, I, I wouldn't know how to navigate that. Assistant Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mark, and I apologize if this question has been answered. The timeline of the two projects, is your hope to do them concurrently? Is your hope to do um, one, then the other? What are... Yeah, yes, I, I, I would for obvious reasons. When we disturb the area, um, it's, it's going to be best to get in and get out. Uh, they really survive much better um, simultaneously. Um, 
is it become not doable in two phases? I don't know if we're at that stage yet on engineering and understanding. Because, see, there's certain things we have to rip up the street for for our building. Sewer lines, water lines, electric lines. So you're ripping up the streets. And then a year later, you say, rip them up again because we actually we want to we want that paving and that curbing and that lights now. Uh, you know, they really need to go simultaneous. Um, and mine's ready to go January, February, March for my building. Um, and we'll be done with um, architecture and construction documents later this year. That's why we've been on this for a year and a half, and as we all painfully know, sometimes these things just take a really long time to get to a certain point. Um, so we would like them simultaneous, but that would just mean that it would need to be ironed out by, you know, a year, you know, because that work wouldn't start in January, February, or March. Um, you know, the sequencing of it would be such that it would happen um, so we, we have about a year window to finalize the design of all this and be at a point where we all say, great, you can rip up those streets. Um, and um, just another question. The timeline of the, of the build of the project in general, with or without this scope, are we looking at? A year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would it be possible, and I know that this is obviously an ask, and it's something I hear um, you know, pretty reflective of the council, is the concern for the um, the the abutters in the neighborhood? Would it be possible? Um, obviously, I know you're coming back the next city council meeting with maybe a more in-depth or I know another Correct. presentation. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to get uh, between now and them to have some people of your staff have some communication with um, you know some of the abutters to to talk about the concerns? We have had many meetings with the abutters. Okay. They've been to a number of meetings. So maybe a, a presentation from your staff. A, you know, addressing some of the concerns that 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 has been coming from the council that you've already addressed with your, with your neighbor, with the, the with the neighbors. We couldn't within two weeks. Okay. We, what we would encourage is to give our our PowerPoint and our color and our presentation to the council, and then out of that we would fully expect that there would be a further engagement with all the abutters. Hey, I, I started my career on this street. I'm the one who developed Pierce Block. So that building was a two-story brick building. Um, and uh, in 1985, I bought it. And I'm the one who developed and sold off the ones like Starbucks. I have a love for that building and that block. Know many of the owners in it. Know many of the owners in those parking spots that you say uh, in the back. I'm on the board of directors of Anthony M. They're back there. Jeff, um, Marple family I'm good friends with. Um, uh, Cliff Doyle in the front that owns it. Um, most of those people back there, we, um, they like what we're proposing to do. Uh, well, there have been a lot of discussions with those abutters back there. The kitchen place right there where the, um, they love what we're doing. Um, and, uh, I've, and I've had direct contacts with a number of the residential, I mean the condo owners inside the Pierce Block. Um, so, we have, over a year and a half, had a number of meetings. We need more, and I certainly respect um, how important that is now, even more so as time goes on. So we don't want to try to circumvent that. We want that to happen. We will have that happen. But there's just this orderly process, you know, after a year and a half working on this and where we're at, we're at the stage to give the presentation to the council and say, thumbs up, thumbs down. And we would fully expect reasonable conditions that uh, would protect abutters, which should be. Um, we would want that. Um, but you know, it's really old in Market Square. Every time we touch something, you know, we, it has a ripple effect. It just goes very, very deep. Um, and uh, you can't avoid that. We, you know, um, there will be an inconvenience associated with that component. Um, so that's how we would propose to give the presentation um, and then come out of that with a bunch of conditions. But, but the sequence of how these projects get done 
you know, the order of approvals and the amount of documents needed and review by fire department and building inspection and all that. All that has to happen before CMNP. That's what I'm saying. The, the CMNP is a byproduct of after all that. I, I certainly understand that point. Um, this is a public realm uh, improvement that we're talking about, uh -huh. separate than all of the things that you can do at one Congress. Um, you know, w how long have we talked about the the the? How long do we have the the QR codes, Councillor Bagley, on Fleet Street? Uh, that probably about a year and a half. I think we would have done Fleet Street this year without the 400th celebration. Actually, we wouldn't have because of logistical reasons, but we didn't plan it for this year, if I recall correctly, because we didn't want to dig up Flea Street in the middle of the 400th. How many people reached out on that? Over 500. Over 500. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many abutters on Fleet Street? Less than 500? Yes, yeah. much less. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that are going, I, I just don't see a world in which we're going to be in a, you know, I, I appreciate the the presentation and I look forward to any changes that might occur in the next presentation but the idea that you stated in a letter that you're not interested in any study committees or anything like that and you're also not interested in in, in having the parking stay on parking because we should do better uh, enforcement that's going to be a tough tough sell um, in well, terms of being able to uh, convince folks you know folks that live here and are used to that and understand that that this is something that that you know is good for them it's tough to tell people what's good for them um, we, we when it's a little different where we so we're not interested we're very interested because we've done it for a year and a half on this project we've been into this we're into this a year and a half with many many meetings with the staff um, with um, zoom meetings with the staff um, with a walk of the planning board with who a butter showed up with the city attorney on a number of issues on Haven Court, which were complicated. So I wanted to make sure I put it in context that I'm part of this community and that I respect that. We're a year and a half into that. So what I said by the content of that is a year and a half plus a year and a half would put us three years out and we're out of time. So that's what I mean by I'm not interested in going back to square zero because to get to this that you're seeing in front of you was a very uh, intense um, and time-consuming process that we've done over a year and a half. So um, that's the context of it, not, not that we, you know, the abutters need to be heard, their voice has to be there, and it, and it has on a lot of it, and it still needs to continue. But we're not at the beginning of the process where we are right now. Um. Councilor Lombardi. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I, I, I view things, I, I appreciate the details that other councilors have raised. I, I, those are important details. Um, what I, I tend to look at things more broadly and I, I see an opportunity for the city to have something that is very consistent with a lot of the planning that has come in the past. The, I sat on the committee that looked at uh, the Worth lot and the um, Pier Street lot. I, uh, the, also the Vaughn Mall. And uh, so this is very consistent with what has been happening and being planned in the city. I, um, I think it is a good opportunity and I would like to resolve these issues that people, they're real issues and I, I don't, I'm not diminishing them at all. I just want to um, find a, an avenue where this could move forward. Um, one of one of the questions I have has to do with the aesthetic, and um, you know, you look at Vaughn Mall, you look at Commercial Alley; um, they're very different spaces, and Brick Market is a very different space. Um, I wouldn't want it to duplicate any of those. I would want it to be something 
completely unique in and of itself. Um, so that's one of my things on that. And uh, I think that, you know, I think that you might be getting there with that. Um, we have experience with um, what I what I call Patty's arch, but pardon me, Terrence, <laughs> on that. Uh, now that was that was a public private thing too that um, has been very successful. Um, and um, yes, that benefits the music hall. And yes. This would benefit your property. Of course it would, because it, it benefits everybody. Um, so uh, I just think it is an opportunity that we have to figure out. And I think, and I, I respect that you're willing to do this at your own cost. Um, I, I guess I want to f find out how we can accommodate the questions of the other city councilors. And um, so that's where I'm at. Could I respond to Vincent? Um, on the um, music hall, sometimes things take a really long time. Um, I don't think many people know that history, but I'm the one who started the music hall. I put up $25,000 10 years before it happened to form a committee to design what you essentially see today. And I'm the private landowner who put up land for the granite benches that's on private property. It's not all on city street. And it took 10 years to make it happen. I then went to the city manager and uh, John Bohanko put it into the capital plan. And it took five years to come forward for, we were proposing that 50-50, public-private. Um, but um, Jeff Clark and myself, we were on the committee that formed it 10 years ago, and Terrence Parker was who we hired to do that. So, you know, I'm used to some stuff taking a really long time. And then when the capital improvement came forward, then the music hall went forward with their full fundraising or the rest of it. Um, so. I don't need to rush something. Sometimes there's a slower path that works. Uh, that was a really slow path, uh, but it was neat to be part of it. So, um, you know, if the timing ends up not being right or the process the city wants, you know, I, I, I respect it. I get it. I, there's no um, set way to do these things. So, Councilor Baylor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and thank you, Mark. I mean, you certainly have been a a priceless member of this community. I mean, you've done so many improvements to Portsmouth. Um, I mean, selfless improvements, improvements to, you know, the gas, water lines, the aesthetics, the uh, lighting, the hiding of the trash, um, the flower pots, the granite benches in front of the music hall. Um, I could go on and on. And those are not lost on me. I, I appreciate those every day. Um, this, I, I, you know, I think this is a definitely huge improvement, especially the Haven Court. You know, as a child, I've always rode my bike through there, and then you'd have to jump over the barrier, get to Gillies. Um, I, I think these would be great improvements. I do have concerns. Obviously, our job is to represent the public, which you are part of. Um, but I have to, the 15-minute spaces and changing that entrance to the garage, those are the two hardest sells that I'd have to my constituents. Um, I know my father, my, all my employees, they park in the garage, my managers, we all go in that way. Because you can go in that way and then you can go out the other way. You don't have to get in, stuck in the garage, per se. Um, you know, and I know most of my father's neighbors from that neighborhood, they, that's the way they come into town. That's the easiest <laughs> entrance, so that's what they use. Um, but remember, the, the garage closing is not part of our... Yes, yes, so I appreciate that. That's not part um, of our... I was a little concerned that the 15 minutes would be a hard stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would hope that we would find some... Um, but that's a hard... If that's a hard stop, that's going to make this... It's harder, but sure, and I, you know, I, I understand and respect the differences. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just got an opinion, it doesn't mean it's right. I just have a much different opinion on, on automobiles downtown and how many other historic cities have dealt with them and how we have not. So, mm -hmm. I just it's just my opinion, you know. No, and, and, I, I, and I understand, and I, um, I, and, I, and I do hope in the future we go towards the direction of you know, less cars on Congress Street. And more pedestrian friendly, yeah. um, you know. Them. And I understand a 15-minute parking spot 
with a loop is going to create its own traffic. Um, so I, under, I understand the thought process, the thoughts behind it, the logic behind it, um, and I do agree with it. I just don't think I'd, I don't know if I'd be able to sell it to my constituents right now. That's, that's, that's my only concern. Councilor Denton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do definitely think that improvements like these that activate High Street, Lad Street, and Haven Court would benefit all of Portsmouth. When it comes to specific some things I can speak to, like the 50-minute parking spots, I'm in agreement with you. Uh, that's not a showstopper for me if they're eliminated, if it activates and greatly improves that street and discourages cars driving. Uh, when it, some things I can't speak to at this time would be what to do with the dumpster, can it go inside the parking garage. But what I can say is um, down at the bottom of, I always get it wrong, uh, Siri Street, um, when that was activated and everything was consolidated, it may not have worked out great, but it greatly improved everything just for the pedestrian walking through behind all those buildings. And I know you have a great record when it comes to trash and recycling, seeing as in um, the new project, you have a very expensive composter in the basement, which I applaud you for. And then there's some things which I'm not gonna speak to at all, uh, like whether or not it should ever be blocked off permanently because that's not currently in the design. So um, overall, I do think these would benefit Portsmouth. I'm fine. Um, it, you need to take a step at some point eliminating um, some vehicular traffic, and I think just small things like those 15-minute spaces, yes, it'll be a headache and a heartache for a lot of people, but that's what it will take to start to get the ball rolling. And as far as next steps go, my thought would be, um, if the council is in agreement to move forward at some point uh, with a memorandum of understanding between us and the developer, maybe have it set up so it could be, I don't know if um, compartmentalized is the right term, so we could actually say we agree with this, but we don't agree with that. And we're not there yet. We have more meetings, but that's my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Tabor. Um, I'm sure you're, you and your team are wondering why is it so hard for me to give something so valuable to the city? Um, and the simple reason is the nine of us don't own the property. The public owns the property. And I know you've put a year and a half of work into it, um, but that's been with staff, and that's not generally been part of a public process. Now we're starting to get out into the public. And um, I'm supportive, conceptually, um, and I think it, these are great enhancements. If we can end up with something like uh, what's in front of the music hall, uh, I think that's good. But again, um, this is not a transaction with the nine of us. Th this is... Um, a public street, two public, three public streets, and we have to uh, hear from the public. And I think if we don't get that input up front, you'll hear it even louder later on in the process. So, you know, I, I, I just caution that that um, <clears throat> you may feel that you're maybe on the 20-yard line, but it's now becoming public and there will be public input that we need to hear. And that's, that's our role. We have to arbitrate between uh, what you, who has a private interest in the adjoining property, feels about it, and what the public feels about it. The people who are not in the room are the people who make that turn down High Street into the garage every day, or get that 15-minute space at, at Starbucks. So that's just gonna be part of the process. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I have a, a couple of comments. I mean, one, on the Union Street project, there were three options, I believed. And in my opinion, the one that was the least car friendly and the most pedestrian and sidewalk friendly was the overwhelming selection. You, If you did that uh, voting today with those three options and you said the one that everybody already picked, the city's not even going to have to pay for, I mean, I think we can reasonably predict the way the voting would go and perhaps we can do something with flash vote and some qr codes very quickly 
Um, to push back a little bit on Councillor Tabor's contention that there's three public streets. I mean, one of those streets has Jersey barriers and a chain link fence on each side. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of pushback in the community about opening that up. Now, I do agree the and parking spaces are gonna be huge, but I think this is such an overwhelmingly vast improvement to an area of town that is, is just, quite frankly, not very pretty or attractive or you wanna walk there. I, I noticed today, um, the I think it was the offices that are on the corner of Lad Street are now vacant and they say they're for lease. Uh, one of my barber shops is, is down behind the Anthenaeum and the gift store that was next to them has now moved to Market Street. So it's not as if this is a desirable place to the city where everybody's trying to move into. It seems that this is where people are getting their start and then as soon as they can, they move out of. And we have a chance to turn it into one of the crown jewels of the city if we move forward with this. So. While I agree it would be great to have a, a lengthier process with more input, I do think as counselors, we do have an obligation to look at opportunities. And you know, we, we go out and knock on doors, we talk to people in the community, and if the people in the community want us to make the city better, and we have a chance to do that at little to no cost, um, I think it behooves us to, to take a very serious look at it. Thank you, Councilor Bagley. Any other questions, Assistant Mayor? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This would be for City Manager. Is it um, possible uh, at the next meeting where we'll have a presentation from McNabb Properties that we also get staff opinions from um, DPW? And We can certainly um, bring the appropriate staff. I think there are certain things that have been requested by the developer that we don't have answers to yet, so we'll be forthright about that. Sure. Thank you. Councilor Moreau? Um, I just... Well, I know people, some people have heartache over losing these few parking spaces on High Street, but because we're going to re-envision Market Square in downtown, let's envision that most of the parking that is in all of that area is 15 or 30 minute parking spaces. You know, this is where we want so that those spaces might be lost, but if we turn other spaces where people park for hours on end into shorter term parking, I think it's a win because we want people that are going downtown to not stay for hours by parking their car there. They should be in the parking garage. So um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a changing everyone's mindset, and I think that we can do that in slow increments. Mr. Mayor, there's one other point that it just because it was used this way just so the council has the right information, uh, John had said it was um, there's two public streets here. Haven Court is not a public street. So just to make sure that it's a private, it's a private way, and that's part of this whole. Excuse uh, me, is uh, you're saying that Haven Court is not a public street? It is not a public street. That's correct. Is that the opinion of our legal department? Legal? No, we have we have a dispute about the actual nature of that um, that street and um, whether the prescriptive rights that have accrued over many, many years um, have essentially made it a public street. Um, but we've had a long dialogue with Mr. McNabb and his team and his attorneys about how to resolve the conflict between their perception of the legal status of that street and ours. And um, we've come up with a solution to preserve both sides' rights and um, and go forward and um, share the access and the uh, responsibility for uh, maintenance of that area. Okay, Correct. so Mr. McNabb thinks it's a public or a private street. We disagree with him on that, and then the result was that we would just. Uh, Mr. McNabb gave us all of the rights uh, that would go along with a, a public street if we were to move forward. Correct. Correct. More or less correct. Yeah. Where is it less? Well, it's an agreement. It's a license agreement that's been negotiated for um, the uses associated with that area for the public and the public access and the public being able to transgress through there. Um, but it it's never been on any plan a street it's always been a private way so you know that and that subtlety doesn't need to be litigated unless it needed to be 
we've the parties have agreed to uh, I want to see it used the way the city wants and the public wants it used so um, but it's not a city street according to you correct and according to all the records right you'd have to go prescriptive you'd have to you'd have to go sh show a use to... okay as we do with many yeah, streets yeah, I understand yeah mm -hmm. okay but it's not uh, we have a difference of opinion on that um, but we've agreed not to litigate that right provided I guess I would love to know maybe in a future conversation we say more or less where that difference lies for the public to understand what that difference lies between more or less or if it's exactly as if it's a public street or not since we're talking about improvements to the public so well, we, we have actually drafted what we call a joint use agreement Correct. which sets forth the city's rights to that street and it sets forth um, our obligations and vice versa for mr. McNabb in um, preserving his improvements and doing the upgrades there and allowing um, the city to use that area as a public right-of-way without having to litigate the issue so but we have a legal document um, I think it's pretty much resolved um, to everybody's satisfaction with the exception of the issue of who's paying for the improvements yeah I, I agree with that statement that that draft I've seen from the legal department I agree and I have no no disagreement of it so and I had planned to pay for the improvements and I still will Excellent. improvements I have in quarter you know need to have happen so we you know that's a different you know, high lad streets uh, is a whole different a whole different thing any other questions to the council? Councilor Tabor. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mark and Councilor Murrow, was there a site walk for the planning board? There was a city site walk that the planning board was invited to attend. And I believe that's the correct way that's to correct. put it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, correct. that's correct. We were requested by the chairman of the planning board to invite them and have it and during that the city attorney um, Bob Sullivan was there and Nick crack now was there and I forget who else from the city was there Remember? facilities, facilities um, and uh, so our schedule is that we take this up again on August 7th 7th and legal inquiry on or parliamentary inquiry would um, I know we got this letter from the Planning Board and Councilor it wasn't on the agenda in the Planning Board but it was you not just brought it up the chairman did yes chairman brought it up mm -hmm. okay but it wasn't noticed so there wasn't a public hearing component Correct. there would this have to go back to the Planning Board so they're gonna approve it seemingly no you know but there was just general support for the concept based off of what they knew right it's my understanding mm -hmm. that the Planning Board has handled all approvals that are germane to the Planning Board right, right. and since these improvements we're talking about now are all on City. public property it's not the purview of the Planning Board at this point okay that's great so it makes sense to have that street be our street then for that portion of it right <laughs> Councilor Blaylock thank you um, after thinking about this and thinking about what Councillor Moreau said, that I know we are, you know, redesigning Market Square, um, but the, if we were to ensure the public there would be more 15-minute spots in the, in the future, um, then that would be a much easier sell. Um, so if that was the case, I would be I would be supportive. I just didn't say that. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of support for accepting any amount of money um, from anybody uh, most of the time. Um, <laughs> the uh, the trick is understanding how that washes out in terms of license fees obviously like license fees get waived if money is given typically for improvements but those improvements in terms of like we don't charge impact fees on those there's a lot of math in there um, <laughs> that would need to to be understood I think the um, 
you know, the the letter um, where it said, you know, read it as kind of done with the, the process, it's difficult to, to hear something like that, knowing that there's a lot of people that, in our experience, at least here, the more people that we can get a shared vision of a future for, the, the more people that are going to be willing to, to deal with the hard yards of any change that happens, whether it's easy change or hard change. And so we want to make sure that we are delivering a message that we want involvement at the beginning. And that was my takeaway from the last project. I think that if we were clear on when it was the city doing the work, when it was Unice doing the work, whether it was Eversource doing the work, whether it was you doing the work, we would have been in a much better situation from that project. And trying to get to that at the beginning, whether it's, you know, not a CMMMP or a CMMP, understand the money that goes into that. But from an engagement standpoint, that's where I think everybody in the council, even if we thought this was a great thing, we don't want to be in a position where we are saying, hey, we decided this and, and it's changing your life considerably. And it used to just be this one project over here where we could point to and say, that's private property, they have a right to do this, versus us now saying, this is our property and we decided to do this because it's a, gonna all come down to the, to the city council and the city of Portsmouth when that's the case. So that's why we wanna spend a little bit extra time. We got a timeline to shovels in the ground. I think we can meet that. But that's where there has to be more due diligence with the public. But I think that looking at the pictures, you know, I'm gonna miss showing, you know, my daughter the mud puddles there, you know, and the garbage can. I cross through that still. My wife's like, this is a little sketchy. I get that. It's an improvement. But we have to have a process where we're not just saying, hey, these 15 minute spots are are going away, but they're being moved. Because that's a huge thing for the locals. Sure. That 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 it's a transforming of how they envision and that's the hardest thing that we will go through. So that's I don't want to and it's if we could do things the way, you know, it was supposed to do, it'd be very easy to run a perfect city. But you know, we're not running a perfect city. We are imperfect people and that's the city that we that's the city that we get. And so having more discussion on that, that's where I think there could be we could get to we could get to yes as Councilor Bailock said on the fifteen minute spaces, but has to be more of a process. Councilor Cook? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just have a request. Um, since we will be receiving a, a presentation August the 7th, um, I would love it if between now and then, if there was a time we could find that worked for some members of the council or anyone who's interested, I would love to see specifically Haven Court because I've always mm. considered that as space that I'm not allowed to go into <laughs> with the barriers. So um, it's really hard for me to envision this plan and how it sits in Haven Court. That's why I have so many questions around accessibility. Um, so I would I would like to see that if possible. We can make anything happen for on our end, you know, any time, any day, any any uh, multiple meetings, single one, whatever, whatever the council's pleasure. And uh, and I appreciate your last words on, you know, the overview on the public. And, you know, you're right. If the if if the public doesn't want to see that in that area we have to listen to that we have to hear it and be prepared to not do it or or consider changes uh, it is part of the process we we um, it's just hard sometimes to know when to navigate and when to start which component of it but we're here now and and we do get that um, so and we do support that so Thank you, Mr. McNabb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Councilor Tabor, seemed like a nice way to end. So you were, thank you. I thought we were coming <laughs> around the clubhouse turn, right. didn't you? Uh, um, no, I just following up on Councilor Cook, uh, if you would, perhaps if, if your team would set a time and date uh, that, and as many of us could attend and uh, we'd have to properly notice it um, as a potential quorum uh, and therefore it would be public, but I think I know I would be interested in uh, walking down that street, seeing High Street where the sidewalks would come to, things like that. That's a great. Uh, we, we, would, we would like to do that. So I guess I just need to know how you would suggest. Um, do you want to shoot us dates? We can clear our whole schedule. Your Honor, so. the clerk's office and my office can coordinate that visit. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McNabb. Everybody's showing up. Appreciate it. Let's see.
Next up, we have a letter from John Singer and Ruth Kennedy regarding proposal for permanent outdoor dining. With a we would wait a motion to refer to the city manager to be shared with the consultant for the Market Square redesign plan. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I was really excited to see this letter come forward to the council um, because it's it's very much uh, part of that conversation that we're having around the Market Square redesign, and um, we're excited to get that process started soon. And I hope that this does help inform that process. Huh? Me too. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next on to the remaining, uh, we're on the last page. Oh, wow. We're going to get through this before 1030. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, appointments to be voted. Uh, Jim Hewitt to the Safe Water Advisory Group, SWAG. Uh, um, just a uh, note on this. There are um, either one or two remaining meetings. This is a Blue Ribbon Committee, so um, it will have to be reappointed the next year. Uh, it was brought forth from Andrea Miko, the chair, uh, who had requested uh, this appointment. So um, any, uh, I'd wait a motion to appoint uh, James Hewitt to the Safe Water Advisory Group. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Next up, Councilor Moreau requests, congrats, Jim, on you some more meetings. You have a resignation, too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Um, with a uh, heavy heart, uh, accept the resignation of uh, Jen Fonseca from the Board of Library Trustees. I'd wait a motion to accept her resignation and send her a letter thanking her for her service. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then, Council Moreau. Yes, as part of our um, density incentives the um, planning board also brought forward a slight change that was not part of the request that we had sent back for an opinion um, and it's uh, in your packages in your original package on page 261 the only true change is basically um, in 10.433 to add the language that when something is used for a governmental use that it should be exempt from provisions of the ordinance so um, I agreed that we would notice this to come back for first reading um, to give the City Council a okay. chance to um, evaluate this requested change. Councilor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've looked through this change um, on uh, for two weeks. I've had an extra two weeks now to really think about it at length, and I have two real problems uh, with the change in language. First, using the term governmental use, I think is difficult because governmental use is ill-defined. Um, you could say, well, that, that is City Hall, the fire department, the DPW, um, the police department, but is that schools? Is it educational? Is it parks? Is that also governmental use or is that public use? So th this is a really unclear term. And I think that what that leads to is even more challenges down the road. The, the second objection I have to this change is around um, the roles and responsibilities of the council versus the planning board. Um, I can understand the desire of the planning board to review any project that comes forward. And generally, the council has asked for opinions for the planning board, even on issues related to municipal properties. So um, I don't see why that tradition would change unless um, we chose to change it. But I think it's important to um, establish that the council is an elected body that makes decisions about municipal properties about the functioning of the government and about the way that we fund projects. So this change would make it very difficult to do projects like in Prescott Park, um, the part of the master park, uh, the master plan for Prescott Park and moving the Shaw building. Well, currently the Shaw building is not used for a governmental use necessarily. We rent the space to the Prescott Park Arts Festival. So someone would say, well, then the planning board should have to approve any move, moving of the Shaw building because that's not a governmental use. You could have the same questions around any 
um, improvements made to the South End Meeting House, to improvements made at community campus as well, that somehow the planning board would have purview over that rather than the council. When actually those decisions are council decisions about municipal properties, how we use them, and we usually delegate that role to the city manager to make those decisions around municipal use of those buildings. So um, I would say it expands the powers of the planning board and definitely decreases the power of the council in making this change. Councilor Bagley. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Um, in light of uh, Councilor Cook's comments, which I largely agree with, I would make a motion to accept this in place on file. If I get a second, I'll speak to it. Um, Is there a second? Can I just ask a parliamentary question? Um, to When we say accept this in place on file, does that mean just we're not adopting or not considering adopting, we're just placing it on file from the planning board? The planning board's proposed amendment. As right. my understanding, the motion is to put their proposed amendment on file and not accept. Second? And I'll just speak to it briefly. Um, more so to Councillor uh, Cook's point about it being a little bit unclear exactly what governmental use is and the Pandora's box it can kind of open. Um, I think if we accept it in place on file, uh, you know, we don't. We le we're leaving things as as they are currently, which has seemed to work really well. I, I don't think this is a uh, a box that we want to open. Councilor Moreau, why should we open this box? I kind of actually agree. After you know a little bit more thought, this was sort of a side thing that came forward, and it wasn't really my focus or my concentration on the changes that we were working on and spending a lot of time on. And I do think that maybe there needs to be uh, more. Um, investigation around the definitions in our zoning and what that would be defined under the statute and compared to what it is in our zoning and I think it is always important to make sure that we're extremely careful when we make changes that might change how we operate and there might be a consequential cons consequences that we didn't plan on so I would be in support of this not Place moving on forward. file. right correct okay all right any other questions? So now we have a uh, planning board representative no longer supporting the motion that she brought forth. Um, I was requested of me to bring this forward. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess at the very least, I would want to make sure that we had your support on any changes to the uh, to the, the planning board. Um, so yeah, I think whether it's priced on file. Seems like it wouldn't. Prov would it prevent them from uh, making a similar request in the future? No, no. No. So we could take a look at it, maybe address Councilor Cook's complaint or uh, concerns. And, and I think at our next meeting, um, I might bring forward and let them know what happened and then suggest that, um, that they ask for a legal opinion on this change and the consequences of that before they would bring it forward again. Okay. So the question now is to place on file and any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next up, we are we here three to quick. informational items, which aren't as timely right. now that it's two weeks past. They were big news back on July 10th. Uh, happy to give an update on the flash vote survey. We had a representation of 56% of those folks who signed up to participate in flash vote. And according to the folks at flash vote, when you have participation at or above 50%, that is meaningful. Uh, the results are online on our, uh, on our page on our website, which uh, I'm sorry, our results are on the flashvote.com page. If you go to flashvote.com forward slash Portsmouth dash NH. What we can share that is update to the July 10th note was uh, the work that Monty Bohannon did to review the long form responses to questions four and five. And the summary I'm happy to give is um, from the nearly 400 open text responses, housing affordability was, was definitely number one. Touched uh, uh, respondents called for the cities to subsidize or incentivize building affordable housing. And some were concerned about whether they could afford to continue living in the city. Uh, followed closely by pedestrian bike and bike improvements, uh, budget and tax concerns, development zoning and planning, 
and then um, others from there. So we have all those results online and we are encouraging people to sign up. It's not too late to become part of the participant pool and that sign up is on our website as well. So that's the update on flash vote. We are working on our second survey which will be constructed over the next several weeks. Uh, the second update, again hot news back on July 10th, that is that the city was fortunate to receive its 11th consecutive affirmation of our AAA bond rating, which as you know measures our ability to manage credit. And as a result, we did very well at our bond sale on June 7th, uh, not only with a very favorable interest rate, but we received a bond premium of $2.1 million on a $22 million bond offering, which means that the amount we, uh, the principal to be paid is reduced by $2 million. And thirdly, and maybe Councillor Tabor would like to speak to this, but we had an update on community power rates based on the rate setting that was, would, will take effect August 1st, and that information is in your packet as well. And we continue through uh, Portsmouth Community Power and the coalition to have lower rates than if you defaulted to Eversource, uh, this time by two cents. So we've come down from the Eversource rate of 22 cents for June and July. The coalition was able to get 15.8 cents, uh, and now we're dropping to 10.2 cents. So that will be significant savings for residents in there. Do we have any idea what that savings for residents is, Mr. Tabor? Uh, right now it's running $29 a month for the average seven, 640 kilowatt hours and it's going to drop another $10 a month. So for savings, I like to add all the numbers up. You know, maybe not for, we talk about like tax rate, what is taxes, but, but is there a cumulative number that we could look at uh, in terms of savings for the city of Portsmouth? On? Let's say for the six months, the average person will save uh, City of Portsmouth months. will save. Think of it okay. as a budgetary number. Do so we have that number? It's in the millions, and I can't give you that off. Right. Your Honor, I've done some quick math, and it's just about $2 million for six months. Seems like we, that should be the headline. <laughs> That's the newspaper, I, man. I buried the lease. <laughs> <laughs> or, or $4 million over the course of the year. Wow, I think you just dissed it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, John, for or Constantine, for all the work that you've mm -hmm. uh, you've led on that, and appreciate all the work that uh, collectively uh, has been done. So uh, appreciate that, and hopefully the good rates keep on coming. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any items under miscellaneous? Council right. Bailoff. I'd like to announce uh, the um, Portsmouth 12 under Little League District team um, won the district championship. Um, they'll be playing in the state tournament. This Saturday at 10 o'clock in Summers at Summersworth Little League Field. Um, so I hope everyone shows up. But it's a big deal. We got a really good team this year. Uh, if they win the states, they go to Connecticut for the New England. If they win that, they go to the World Series. So, awesome. Yeah. Go Portsmouth. Go Portsmouth. Any other miscellaneous? It's a good one to end on. All right. We had a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey, Portsmouth.